He's so good to us, isn't he? Amen. He is so good to us. He's, he's been doing something. His spirit's moving here tonight. Thankful for it. Did you come for him to move tonight? Amen. 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 Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Amen. I'm going to get right into this message. This lady's at a crossroad and she can't really figure out which way to go. And we get like that in life. Amen. You know, not, not just spiritually, but emotionally. We, we come to a crossroads sometimes and we just really don't know which way to go. I, I, I don't know if, if you experience that very much, but it, it's quite often in my life. <laughs> but you know, one thing about it, God knows the direction we need to take. Yes, amen. And even if we do go down the wrong one, He can turn us around. He, he allows 180s, amen? He'll turn amen. us around and get us on the right road. So she's trying to figure out which way do I go? What do I do? Well, in the, the book of, go to this uh, next slide here. It says, are the spiritual promises from God enough to change our course in life? Yes. Are the spiritual promises from God enough to change our course in life? Yes. Hallelujah. You think about that. Hallelujah. I mean, God's made all kind of promises to us. And sometimes we, we allow things that come up, mountains, Valleys, uh, dark times, confusion. We allow this to fog our mind when God says, do not forget about my promises. Amen. They're still alive. Yes. They're still for you. Amen? Amen. There are so many promises that we haven't even touched. Amen. There's so many blessings that we have not even received. That God has for us. Amen. Amen. I, I want to share with you about the seven churches that Jesus talks about in the book of Revelation. Now, in each church, you listen, in each church, there was an issue. God found an issue with them. In each church. Some worse than others. And, you know, if I was going to be in a church, I'd like to be in the Philadelphia church. Or, you know, I, I would like for somebody to say, you know, that, that's, that's where I would put you. But you know what he said about them? He said, you have only a little strength. You, what happens, how, how do you get weak spiritually? You know, I know the attacks from the enemy, you know, pulls your strength down. But really, you're, when you get weak spiritually, it's usually because you have not refueled. Amen. 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 You know, you, you may get down on your knees and, and, and do a little five-minute routine, ten-minute routine. If you listen to me now, I'm trying to help you here. You may do your five or ten minute routine. You may flip through the Bible and just kind of, you know, point at a place. Jesus wept. Wow, I'm ready to go today. <laughs> Amen. But you don't really dig into the Word and let it feed you. Because the thing about the Word, listen to me, the thing about the Word of God is the more you put in you, the less of the junk you have in you. Because it just kind of flushes it out. Amen? Amen? So you think more on the Word than you do the junk in the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. So in the seven churches, he named every one of them, all seven of them, and there was issues there. And like I say, you know, Philadelphia, you know, they, they, they just wasn't praying enough. But they still believed. And they still held on. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And I know we have those times. I know we have those days that we're so busy that we kind of say a prayer on our way. But there's so many distractions in life. It's, it's hard to just really connect. But God, can 
I tell you, he does understand. All right? I don't want you to think he does not understand that he's ready to, to body slam you because you didn't get on your knees and stay there about 30 minutes, okay? But that's what he would like for you to get close to him, one-on-one -on -one relationship. Amen. So I want to share some things with you. We've got something to read from seven churches. So just bear with me. We're going to go through it, okay? It says, this is what he said about the church of Ephesus in Revelation 2 and 7. This is his promise. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Let me stop right there. I don't know if you've been, uh, for those that's on social media, I don't know if you've seen some stuff I've put on about Dennis the Menace. Amen. I, I've been reading, they popping up. I read pretty soon, when you grow up, but I, I, keep, I keep reading them because there's a lot of humor in every one of them. But Dennis was with his mother and his dad. And he's told, he told his dad, he said, Dad, he said, why does this girl that I know, I forgot her name, why does she keep talking to me as if I'm listening to her? Huh? Margaret, okay, little Margaret. And, uh, and he said, Dad, do you know anybody like that? And the mama was looking like, yeah, your dad. I talked to him, and he doesn't listen. I talked for five minutes. And he said, did you say something, honey? It just got quiet in here. But that's okay. That's okay. They'll take care of it when you're at home. Let's get a mind on you. Church. Amen. Hallelujah. But you know, it was it was kind of funny, but but Jesus is saying this, he that hath an ear, let him hear. I mean, actually, not just kind of listen at, he wants us to hear this. Okay? He wants us to hear his promises tonight. Amen. Do you want to hear his promises? He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. My goodness. I want to be an overcomer. Amen? Because I love to eat. Let's move on on that one. That was your chance to laugh. The church at Smyrna. Revelations 2 and 11 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. My goodness. He's protecting his people. Amen. I said he's protecting his people. Hallelujah. The church at Pergamos. Revelation 2 and 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saveth he that receiveth it. Amen? I'm ready for my new name. I'm tired of Buford. Because every time I meet somebody new, I say, they, they introduce, I say, my name's Buford. And they're like, whoa. <laughs> After good, Southern, I ain't, you know, <laughs> whatever. You know, <laughs> what, what it is, you know. I, I, I love, I'm glad my daddy had that name. Hallelujah, they just could have kept it. <laughs> Church at Thyatira, Revelation 2, 25 through 29. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father, and I will give him the morning star, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. My goodness, there's some promises going on. Amen. 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 To the church of Sardis, in Revelation chapter 3, 
Verse 5 and 6. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I'm glad my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. And I can just picture God taking that pen and dipping it in the blood and signing my name. Hallelujah. 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 The church at, what are we on, Sardis? The church at Philadelphia, here we go. Chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is near Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. My goodness. I'll be getting a new name. I see it right now. Yes, amen. I wonder if it's going to be Peter, Paul, John, James. Hallelujah. Anything but Buford Jr. Maybe Jesus Jr. How about that? Hallelujah. The church at lay of the sin. Revelations 3, 21 and 22. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. If you got an ear, listen tonight. I said, if you got an ear, to hear, listen tonight. You may have junk in your life. Jesus was talking about the junk in the churches. But he gave them a promise. He said, if you'll just be an overcomer, if you'll just overcome this mess, I have blessings, eternal blessings waiting for you. Anybody here that, that doesn't have any junk in their life? We, you know, I mean, anytime you're made out of dirt, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, he, he made perfect vessels. Study, study them out. He made perfect vessels. Just, just try to figure out how this body works. It will amaze you. The more I learn about it, the more I'm amazed at what God does. And he took these perfect bodies and he breathed life into them. But the enemy stepped up, deceived them, and we've had trouble ever since. But God looked down on an imperfect world. That he made from perfection. Amen. How it was flawed by sin. And he says, I'm sending my son because this is the only way that I can fix this. Yes. At several points, he was wanting to destroy this whole world. In fact, he destroyed all but eight. And then he wanted to destroy again. But a man named Moses stepped up and said, God, please, spare these people. They belong to you. I know you don't want to do this. And God had mercy. Yes. And God's looking at us. And he sees our flaws. He sees our failures. He sees our shortcomings. And he says, I want to heal them. 
I want to make things right. Amen? I'm going to give them a promise, and if they ever get a hold of this promise, if they ever realize there's an eternal blessing waiting on them, they're going to push some of that junk aside, and they're going to try to live for me. They're going to love me. They're going to walk with me. They're going to hold me. They're going to be with me. And they step away. Hallelujah. That's what we've got to get our eyes on. We've looked at too many flaws. We paid attention to too many flaws and failures in our life, in people's lives, and it's taken our eyes off of all the blessings that He has for us. Amen. Amen. And it's time to refocus. Go back to the next to that next slide. Are the spiritual promises from God enough to change our course in life? Are they enough? Are they enough? You know, when our focus is on the wrong things, go back to the first one. I'm working it tonight. <laughs> when our focus is on the wrong things, we're right there. Because we have choices all the time. We have choices every day. Did you know that? Amen. We have a choice whether we're going to get out of bed and face the world or stay in bed and say, I can't do world today. And for those that choose to get out of bed and say, I've got to face the world we still got a choice. We can either face them with a good attitude or face them with a bad one. It's our choice. Amen. If we face them with a bad one, we still have a choice. Boy, we're, we're running into a lot of crossroads here. If we face them with a bad attitude, we have a choice to either stay on that path or take a better path. You can always change midstream. <laughs> so if we decide we want to face this world with a, a good attitude, we still run into a crossroad depending on what takes place that day. I was talking to a, a person that waits on people today. And uh, we were joking around. The manager got involved in all of it, and we were all laughing. And uh, and I looked at her, and I said, y'all don't always laugh like this, do you? She said, oh, no. She said, I had somebody cuss me out the other day. And she said, uh, I wanted to quit my job. But, uh, 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 but first, I wanted to jump on her. <laughs> and so we, we have a choice. That lady had a choice. We have choices. And just because we get up in the morning with a good spirit in us, with a good attitude, and we're going to make this day, you got to think about this. You're going to have a choice during that day. Because you're going to face something. You're going to drop something. It's going to break. You're going to lose something. Something's not going to go right. Or something's going to go good. And someone's going to uh, compliment you. So you'll have a choice. It can keep your day going or it can make it go sour. It's up to us. And, and we all take the wrong choice. <laughs> you know, because when that bad thing happens, it just messes up our day. How you doing? Well, I was doing good to such and such happen. Amen? I'm not getting an amen from y'all. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but I'm going to drink some water when y'all think about that. <laughs> so right here, Jesus told him what was wrong. But he gave them a promise. Amen. Yes, 
So you, you know what's wrong, but are you going to change it? Because there's an eternal promise there. Amen. Is that promise enough to change our course in life? You know, I, I, I could go the other path. You know, what if, what if, you know, God just lets you face hell and, and you saw the torment? Would that change your course? Sure it would. But then it would just be fire insurance. Lord, I want to go to heaven because I don't want to go there. Okay? Sure, we do not want to go there. But why do you want to go there? Why do you want to go to heaven? Is it just for the promises? Is it just to stay out of hell? Or if someone in here loved Jesus Amen. and you want to spend your life with him, because he died for you. He shed his blood for you. He forgave you of your sins over and over and over and over again. And he's had mercy and grace upon you. Is that the reason you want to be there? That's the reason I want to be there. I want to be there because he's done so much for me. He's been too good to me. He gave his life for me. He cleansed my sins away. He he lifted me up. He's given me love and eternal love, church. My goodness. That's the reason I want to go to heaven. That's the reason I want to look at these promises and say, that's changing my life. That's changing my life. Hallelujah. Is it changing yours? Is it changing yours? I got some homework for you. Oh no, Pastor, no homework. <laughs> I know two in here that say, oh no, Pastor, no homework. <laughs> Read about the seven churches in Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Read it. Can I tell you that the church of Philadelphia? changed my life. It changed my life. It changed my wife's life. Because it set us on a different course in life. He says he opens doors that no man closes and closes doors that no man opens. I had that for a message one day. Went to the service station right across from the church at where I was just visiting pastor. Okay, visiting. Do not want to pastor. Just visiting. And this older gentleman there, right when I got out of the truck, started to pump my gas. He said, "Praise God, brother! God opens doors and no man closes, and God closes doors and no man opens." I went, "Whoa." <laughs> this is prophetic here. <laughs> then I go in to pay for my gas, and I had to wait in line, and he had already left, and there's this lady behind me, and, and I, I said, oh, I got, I think it was 20 or $40 on a certain pump, and that lady said, uh, that's already been paid for. I said, what? And that lady behind me said, Lord Jesus, a blessing on Sunday morning. <laughs> God, God was preparing us for what was about to happen that day. I was preaching that message, and the most unusual thing happened. All nine of those people that went to church there, Y'all get there in just a minute. <laughs> Think about it. All nine of them were crying. 
while I was preaching. And I thought, wow, what's God doing here? And then when it was over, he said, Peter, now. I mean, I didn't hear those words, but I felt what he was saying. Here, now. I asked my wife to come up. Grabbed her by the hand. Her palms were just as sweaty as could be. And I told him, if you want us to pastor this church, we'll be glad to. Hadn't even conferred with my wife. So I didn't know if I was going to get a hug from her, a slap, or, dear God, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? And uh, when it was over, we just rode around. We were supposed to have been at the place, the restaurant team. We just rode around and cried. Because that wasn't the direction we wanted to go. But, you know, it was partly her fault. And I'll tell you, because just a few weeks before, we was riding down and saw that church, and my wife says, that church needs a pastor, and I said, I don't think so. <laughs> and that's right where God put me. Because you forced me to say that. <laughs> So I, I'm telling you, there's so much life in this. I'll never forget it. There's so much life in what God speaks to those churches. Amen. I read some of them, and I think, God, how can you make a promise to somebody that rotten? And you know what he said? I sent my son for somebody that rotten. Amen. Have you ever heard or, or well, I guess I'll have to say this. Have you ever heard or said this? That person's not worth knocking in the head. Jesus said that person was. Amen. Was worth me coming and giving my life. He saved you. You might not have been bad, but we were all going to hell because we didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So he's taking flawed people and giving them promises. Boy, I'll tell you what. We was at this one church and there was these people there and they had really messed with us while we were pastor. And I'm talking about it wasn't, it was not pretty. And then the man of God gave them some promises. And I thought, what? But now that I think about it, God looked at the flawed people in these churches. You know what these seven churches represent? They represent this church. Amen. They represent the next church and the next. Yes. All seven of them because you have that type of people in the church. And God's making promises to them because he loves them. Should we love them? If God loves them, shouldn't we love them? So here's another crossroad. Just like this. Do I love them? Do I hate them? We got, we got that crossroad. So are these promises enough to change our course of life? Hallelujah. By you get to me. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word tonight. God, I'm, I'm so thankful that you made promises to this old boy. I thank you for it, Lord. And 
And God, every time I look into the, the seven churches in the book of Revelation, I see parts of me in there. And I see your mercy and your grace. I see your love reaching out to me. And God, if these people would just read those, those words closely, they would see parts of themselves and they would see your love, mercy, and grace in each one of them. Those promises, Lord, those are eternal promises. But God, we've got to fall at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, God heal me. Save me. Deliver me. Jesus, I love you. Because of your love, mercy, and grace, I want to make it in. I want to be a part of your life. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for us. Thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you for coming out of that grave, Lord, victorious. And you making us victorious because you live inside us. Help us, Jesus, here. Help us here this evening. God, we love you so much. We love you so much, Lord. Here we are, Lord. At the crossroads, which one will we take? Will this change our course of life? Will your promises here change our course of life? I hope so. I hope so, Lord. Thank you for everything. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us, Lord. Thank you for being here for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 